when you're writing fiction, what's your first name? Hi, Maddie. She said, when, you, when you're writing fiction, how do you create character and how do you avoid creating same old character? Yeah. Hmm. That's a hard one. Next question for Mr. King. <laughs> <laughs> you write a lot about this in On Writing. I think, that, I think that the way that I would answer that is, first of all, you start with the idea that for most of us, <clears throat> we think that we're we're good guys. We think we're the good guys. We think we're on the side of angels. And so my idea is everybody has some part of their character uh, that's admirable. I'm sure that at one time or another, uh, Theodore Bundy helped an old lady across the street. Of course, he probably raped and murdered her on the other side, but that's the, what I'm talking about. That's the yin, yin and yang of it. So I have a tendency to start uh, totally unjudgmental. I, and that's, that, that's part of the benefit of working story rather than plot. Uh, our lives develop naturally and our characters develop naturally over a period of time and they are influenced by a lot of different characteristics. And the way that we look at other people is influenced too over a period of time as we get to know them. Uh, sometimes women that you didn't think were, you know, particularly good looking, you get to know them, the more you see them, the more you say, after a while you say, oh, uh, that woman is pretty. And then a year or two later you say, that woman is really beautiful, but I didn't see that at first. Or you say, some guy, well, he's just a guy, and uh, he sort of just somebody else that happened to be at this party or in this dorm or whatever, and you get to talk to those people a little bit, the personality starts to come forward and you start to see the, the shadows and the depth of things. I've got a character in Mr. Mercedes who's, whose name is Holly Gibney, and I expected her to be a walk-on, okay? She's this 47-year-old woman who still lives with her aging mother, and uh, she's got psychological problems, and she never speaks above a, a mumble. In fact, she's introduced in the book as Holly the Mumbler. <laughs> because she's one of these people, we've seen this person, we've all seen this person. You can't really say what they're saying, you can't really hear what they're saying, and they have a tendency to sort of avoid eye contact. Um, they might look up every now and then, <laughs> and say a little bit. Um, they might have certain tics, habits. So I thought to myself, well, I've got a great line for this, uh, uh, this, this lady. The first time that my main character meets her is at uh, a Holiday Inn restaurant where he thinks she orders a sneeze burger because she speaks so low she's actually ordering a cheeseburger. So I thought she was a walk-on. I thought she was a flat character. Little by little, she's become more and more important to me and more fun to write about. And I started to see that she has an interior life. And you begin by observing. We, I mean, you have to look. Raise your hand again if you're in the writing courses. You have to look. You have to see. I mean, you can't just walk and let it all go by. It's, some, of it, some of this has got to stay. You've got to see how people are. Uh, you've got to look for the person who, uh, when they eat, uh, they have a tendency to look down at their plate and they're tearing their napkins. Have you ever seen a napkin ripper? <laughs> okay. Or somebody who is in a cafeteria and they've kind of like got the straw in pieces. Uh, Holly is a lipstick biter. Kind of like <laughs> this all the time, kind of a, you know, she'll talk through her nails. So I, it's, it's part of the fun of it to me, is to see better and see more. Do you clear. know that famous Flannery O'Connor uh, line about this? She says, there's a certain grain of stupidity the writer can hardly do without. Yep. And that is the quality of having to stare. Yeah. So I mean, you're hearing you say for everybody is that when you create character, you're really fueled by curiosity, not answers. That's right. You want to see them grow. And they do their own thing. If you let them, if you let them do their own thing, 
And one of the things that uh, drives me crazy about uh, second and third rate fiction is when a, a writer will wind the character up and make them go through certain paces. And I think, oh, why don't you just go back and cut out paper dolls? <laughs>